Why would a plane ever dump fuel? Well, it mostly comes down to weight. Let me explain. Planes are built to handle a lot, but they have limits, especially when landing. When a big plane like a Boeing 777 or an Airbus A350 takes off, it's fully loaded. Passengers, cargo, and fuel. That full weight is safe for takeoff. But if something goes wrong right after takeoff, like a mechanical problem or a medical emergency, and the plane needs to land right away, it might be too heavy to land safely. Every plane has a max landing weight. If it's heavier than that when it touches down, the landing gear or structure might get damaged. That's where fuel dumping comes in. The crew can get rid of some fuel in the air to bring the weight down. It's not something that every flight has to worry about. In fact, for most flights, especially short ones, dumping fuel isn't even an option. Smaller planes or planes that aren't flying very far usually don't carry enough fuel to go over their landing weight. So, if something happens and they have to turn around shortly after takeoff, they can just come back and land without doing anything special. They might fly around in circles for a little bit to burn off some fuel and get lighter, but that's about it. But it's a different story when we're talking about the big jets. Planes like the Boeing 777, 747, or the Airbus A350. They're made for long trips flights that go across oceans or from one continent to another. And for flights like that, these planes take off with tanks full of fuel, sometimes over 200,000 pounds of it. That's a lot of weight, more than what the plane is allowed to land with safely. See, every plane has two important weight limits, maximum takeoff weight and maximum landing weight. The takeoff weight is higher because the plane is expected to burn fuel during the flight, getting lighter by the time it lands. So, the plane can leave the ground heavy, but it shouldn't come back down that heavy. If it does, it puts a lot of stress on the landing gear, the brakes, and the structure of the aircraft. In a worst-case situation, it could even damage the plane during landing. Now, imagine a big plane is just getting started on a long flight. Maybe it just took off from New York, heading to Tokyo. But something happens 10 minutes into the flight. Maybe there's a mechanical warning, or someone gets sick and needs help fast. The plane needs to come back and land, but it hasn't had time to burn off much fuel. It's still way too heavy to land safely. How Fuel Dumping Works Fuel dumping isn't just opening a cap and letting it pour out. Most large commercial jets have something called a fuel jettison system. This isn't something pilots use all the time, only in certain situations when it's really needed. But when they do need it, it has to work fast and safely. So, how does it actually work? The system is made up of a few main parts – pumps, pipes, valves, and nozzles. The fuel is stored in different tanks around the plane, mostly in the wings and sometimes in the center part of the aircraft. These tanks are all connected with pipes that move fuel where it's needed, whether that's to the engines or, in this case, out of the aircraft. When the pilots need to dump fuel, they turn on the jettison system from the cockpit. It's not as simple as just pushing a button. There are safety steps built in so fuel doesn't get dumped by accident. But once it's turned on, the pumps begin moving fuel through special valves. These valves are designed to handle the flow of fuel and make sure it gets pushed out properly. Now, here's the interesting part. The fuel doesn't just drip out the bottom of the plane. It gets sprayed out through small nozzles. And these nozzles are usually located near the tips of the wings. Why there? A few good reasons. First, it keeps the fuel far away from the engines, which are closer to the fuselage. You don't want fuel spraying near hot engine parts or exhaust, because that could be dangerous. Second, when the fuel sprays out from the wingtips, it's more likely to spread out into the air and evaporate before it ever reaches the ground. At high altitudes, where dumping usually happens, the fuel turns into a mist and breaks up quickly. This setup also helps keep the dumping process steady and balanced. Since the wings hold a lot of the plane's fuel, sending it out through both tips helps keep the plane from leaning or tipping to one side. 
The pilots can usually control how much fuel is dumped, how fast, and sometimes even which tanks it comes from. Rules and Safety Fuel dumping doesn't happen just anywhere. There are strict rules about when and where it can be done. Pilots usually have to contact air traffic control first and get permission. Planes are told to dump fuel over safe areas, like open water or unpopulated land. They're told to fly high enough that the fuel can evaporate before reaching the ground. In the US, the FAA says that if a plane dumps fuel, it should be above 5,000 to 6,000 feet, and it should be done away from towns or cities. Other countries have similar rules. Dumping fuel is also a last resort. Pilots try to avoid it if they can. But in some emergencies, it's the safest option. What happens to the fuel? This is a common question. Where does the fuel go? Does it fall to the ground? In most cases, no. When the fuel comes out of the plane, it's sprayed into a fine mist. That mist spreads out and evaporates in the air. Jet fuel evaporates quickly at high altitude. The air is cold and dry up there, which helps. So by the time the mist reaches the lower atmosphere, most of it is gone. If a plane dumps fuel while flying at a low altitude, there is a small chance that some of that fuel might not fully evaporate and could fall to the ground. But honestly, that doesn't happen very often. It's pretty rare. And even when it does, it's usually just a small amount. Nothing like a big splash or puddle coming down from the sky. Here's why that matters. Jet fuel isn't something you want falling where people live, obviously. So pilots and air traffic controllers are trained to avoid dumping fuel over busy places, like cities or towns. If they have to do it, they try to fly over open areas, like farmland, open fields, or large bodies of water, where it's less likely to bother anyone or cause damage. Most of the time, when fuel is dumped, the plane is still pretty high up in the air, sometimes 10,000 feet or higher. At that height, the fuel doesn't just fall straight down. It sprays out into a fine mist and spreads out in the wind. As it falls, it breaks up into even smaller droplets, and by the time it gets anywhere near the ground, it's either fully evaporated or scattered so thin that it doesn't really make it down at all. Can all planes dump fuel? No, not every plane has a fuel dumping system. Smaller planes like private jets or regional airliners often don't carry enough fuel to need one. If they're too heavy, they can usually just circle and burn off fuel. Even some older commercial planes don't have the system. That's because it adds weight and cost. If a plane isn't expected to ever need to dump fuel, there's no reason to install it. But most modern long-haul jets, like the Boeing 787 or Airbus A330, have the ability to dump fuel. So do many military aircraft. The Future of Fuel Dumping with more fuel-efficient planes and better flight planning, fuel dumping is becoming even less common. Modern planes are lighter and use less fuel. New systems let pilots track fuel weight better, too. And improved engines mean planes can handle more weight safely. Some newer planes, like the Boeing 787, don't even have fuel dumping systems because they don't need them. If they're too heavy, they just fly in circles and burn fuel until they're light enough to land. That might be the future. Fewer dumps, more planning, and better tech. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe to see more videos like this.